In this video, I go over my top 10 picks for New Comic Book Day, October 27th, 2021. What's going on everybody? Justin here aka No Good Comics and welcome back to the channel. I'm back with another episode where I break down my top 10 picks for New Comic Book Day coming out next week, October 27th, 2021. I cannot believe we are uh, flying through October here. It's going to be Halloween before you know it. I love seeing all of the Halloween books the issues that have been posted all over on Instagram, uh, a ton of great ones out there. And uh, so if you're into the horror vibes, uh, I'm sure you're enjoying the season. Um, before I get into the list, as always, take a moment, smash the like button, subscribe to the channel if you are new. Also, shout out to everybody that's in the premiere chat right now. If you are not here at the premiere chat, but you're watching this on the uh, the replay, if you ever want to catch up with us uh, live in the chat, you can just swing by on a Thursday. These uh, always premiere uh, Thursdays at 1230 Eastern. So uh, again, everybody who's here right now in the premiere chat, good to see you all. Thanks so much for the support. And uh, let me know in the comment section below what books you're excited for next week. If you guys agree with this list or not, you know, I'm always looking forward to hearing some of your recommendations and what you guys have to th uh, have to say uh, about uh, some of these new books. Um, I always like to clarify too, these books that I'm about to talk about, they're just books that I'm really excited for. Uh, think either books I've been reading for a while or new issues that are just about to come out, uh, new series I should say. Um, and yeah, just really uh, like to talk about the ones that I'm, I'm looking forward to. So um, without further ado, let's get into book number 10, almost at number one. Book number 10, uh, we're going to go with After Dark, issue number one. It's an Aftershock comic book uh, and it is written by Cullen Bunn. Look at this, look at this, uh, this cover here. I mean, super, super dark, super creepy, you know, um, it's, and I'm looking at the, the listing for it here. It says, Tales from the Crypt meets the Twilight Zone. Boom. That's all, that's all I need to hear. All I need to hear. That mixed with the fact that Colin Bunn is writing it. Colin Bunn's been killing it with these horror uh, issues lately, and uh, it's just been a lot of fun. I see also here Frank Thierry is uh, noted. Oh, I see. Uh, now I'm looking down further. There's there's a bunch of writers, including Jim Starlin. Wow, I did not realize that. Uh, so it looks like it's a mix of different writers doing kind of short tales or short, you know, um, story uh, stories. So um, it looks cool. I love um, that theme of uh, kind of back in like the, you know, the 50s, 60s, 70s, like the the early like horror books that, uh, issues that have always been out. I've, be, I've become a little bit more of a fan of those over these past couple months. If you guys have been following me, uh, trying to collect, uh, you know, even just some of like, I mean, Swamp Thing and things like that. Uh, so really cool to kind of see uh, this particular project coming out. Uh, yeah, now that I'm like thinking about it, I completely forgot that this was announced a while ago uh, where Jim Starlin was going to be involved and all that stuff. So um, very cool. Definitely on the list uh, for sure. So uh, if you're into the horror stuff, definitely check out uh, my number 10 pick here, uh, which is After Dark issue number one. Um, let's see. Going into number two. I'm going with another horror vibe type of uh, book here. Task, uh, did I say number nine? Number nine. Uh, Task Force Z, issue number one. Um, I I know nothing about it. Uh, I understand. I know this is just like a, it's a, it looks like it's like a almost like a zombie reboot type thing for DC. Matthew Rosenberg doing the uh, the writing here. Eddie Bar uh, Barrows doing the penciling. Um, it's just another one of those kind of stand standalone stories that DC puts out. I feel like a ton of, um, but for the sake of the season and, uh, and, and again, just really in, into exploring a lot of these horror books, um, I figure I'd throw it on the list here. Uh, task for, uh, force Z, um, says on a day, hundreds of Gotham city's most dangerous and deranged criminals were left dead after an attack on Arkham Asylum. And now they're getting a second chance at life. Um, a serious benefactor is bringing together a new task force and is recruiting the only person who can lead them. Someone who knows uh, what it's like to come back from a brutal death, Red Hood. Okay, cool. So, um, and that makes sense uh, looking at this cover here. So Jason Todd, uh, this kind of revolves around him. Um, yeah, I mean, like I said, I think this is kind of like just a new standalone series. But I will definitely check it out. So that's why it is uh, towards the back of my list here, but certainly uh, on there for sure uh, as my number nine pick, uh, Task, Force, uh, Task Force Z, issue number one. Uh, going into my number eight pick here, <laughs> another one. I mean, very similar. I, I didn't know how to kind of group. I just grouped these together. I don't know if they're going to be good or not. I'm going to check them out. 
Uh, for this one particularly, I mean, there's been a lot of like promotion around this or marketing, I guess I should say, uh, for DC. Uh, my number eight pick is DC versus Vampires issue number one. And the main reason that I'm going to be giving this a shot is because I see James Tynan, he's involved uh, as one of the writers. Also, Matthew Rosenberg is a writer. Um, and Otto Schmidt doing the artwork. And I see there's a lot of different uh, variants, uh, which is cool. I'll run some of those by uh, here as well. But uh, yeah, I mean, ultimately, again, not sure if it's going to be corny or not. It's 12 issues altogether, but I'm going to give it a shot because um, you just never know, right? Never know. Uh, so that's going to be my number uh, my number eight pick on the week, DC versus Vampires issue number one. Um, I'm sorry, my number seven. I just say, no, 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 my number eight. Okay. Uh, all right, let's see. My number seven pick is going to be Wonder Girl issue number four. This has been a great series. I do feel that it's it's been slowed down in terms of um, when the issues are coming out. I don't know why I feel like issue three was so long ago. Either way, um, it's been, it's been, I've been really enjoying it. Uh, it's with Yara Floor. If you guys are fans of Yara Floor, uh, you know, in this Wonder, Wonder Girl uh, uh, series, Joel Jones, I'm all about it. Anything Joel Jones has been working on, uh, I'm, I'm always open to checking out. Uh, love the artwork as well. I know that the art is kind of switched over now with uh, uh, Adriana Mello now doing the artwork. So I know um, Joel Jones was kind of the one to kick it off. That was what I was initially also sold on. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm still going with it. It's early. So uh, issue four, uh, that's going to be my number seven pick of the week, Wonder Girl, issue number four. Uh, let's see, going to my number six, I... This was tough because, I mean, I know there's a lot of hype around this book, and I'll share my my overall feelings about this series, but uh, number six is going to be House of Slaughter, issue number one by Boom Studios. Now, I know that there's a lot of hype around something is killing the children. It's a big fan favorite for a lot of people. Um, and then, of course, this is like the tie-in, I, from my understanding, is like takes place beforehand. We get an understanding of like where the House of Slaughter, how it maybe I guess more of like the origin of the House of Slaughter uh, and where it came from and the people that were involved to begin with. I don't know how much of it's going to be focused on Erica, the main character from Something is Killing the Children. Um, I am not fully caught up on Something is Killing the Children. I've read the first two trades. I really enjoyed what I read. I feel like I I made the decision that I wasn't going to buy any more Something is Killing the Children. I was going to wait for the trade. And I kept saying that and saying that. And then like the third trade came out and then I just didn't pick it up and it's just kind of been a thing like all right i gotta get around to it gotta get around to it and then you know then the i think the whatever came after that the, the next uh story arc it's not out as a trade yet but it's it's out now and even that i haven't read so i still have a lot to read um i don't know i feel like i'm worried that it's like just overhyped and maybe that's why i'm like not so excited to like dive into it per se um but i certainly want to give this a shot House of Slaughter. So that's why I put it up here, uh, especially as number six on my list. And uh, there's Jax uh, saying hello. So I just thought, you know, just to give you guys perspective, like I am not a diehard fan of something killing the children per se. Uh, I I guess it's just because I've been reading so many other things. My mind's just kind of been off of it. Um, I know I did like the first two trades a lot from what I read. Um, but like, I know a lot of people are just all in on it. And Again, I mean, it's it's a it's not a bad it's not bad by any means. Um, you know, we all we all have our own you know our own things. I think for me, I'm just really focused on a lot of other books right now, especially like X Men catching up on things like that. Um, to where my heart is or my excitement is just not quite there. So, anyways, that's my number six pick of the week for now. You know, I'll I'm I'll follow up on it after I read it and see where it goes. Uh, and in the meantime, yes, I, I know I should probably still catch up to something that's killing children just because. Um, but we'll see. Uh, we'll get there eventually. Uh, so that is my number six pick of the week, House of Slaughter issue number one. Uh, okay. Uh, before we go any further, uh, I always like to give a community shout out of the week. And this week's community shout out is going to my good friend JB, aka Discovery Bay. If you guys don't know JB, uh, well, you should. Uh, JB to me is one of the OG YouTubers in terms of like the comic book community. I started watching JB a couple of years ago. And I just remember like wondering, like, who is this guy? He is always putting out, he's always streaming. He's literally every day. And that's what he does. See, he, he's, uh, if you're not already subbed to him, I put his information in the description below. But what he does is he shouts out the community. And he actually has, it's like a TV show. It's like a legitimate like news channel 
for comic books and the community. I mean, it's, it's all focused on the community. And he literally will go through YouTube and point out who has shows, who has premiered videos coming up just for that day. So it's a great way for the community to, again, one, I mean, just discover new people in the community, new comic book creators, and two, be aware of, uh, you know, when their shows are, which is really convenient, uh, I think, you know, and he does it early in the morning, uh, so you can catch them in the morning, and then basically from there, he just sends you on your way, and he's like, make sure you check this channel out, make sure you check out, you know, uh, I know he mentioned our show, uh, The Omni X-Men, for, for me and John's uh, uh, X-Men show, uh, you know, on Tuesdays, he, he brought that up on Tuesday, and, and so on and so forth, uh, he does a ton for the community, he is certainly a pillar uh, as part of this community, and I feel like people a lot of the newer people that have come into the community don't know him uh because he took a break and uh and he wasn't putting out content for i, I want i feel it feels like it's been like at least half a year i mean it feels like like eight months to a year that he hasn't been putting content out at least on youtube uh or at least this particular show I'm, i know he's been putting out little things here and there but now he's like back full force uh you know from what it looks like uh, on a daily so really exciting stuff uh, again shout out to you jb love everything that you do for the community keep doing it man uh and everybody here watching make sure you go sub him up uh, in the description below um all right cool so let's go into my number five pick of the week as we get through this top 10 by the way take a moment smash that like button if you if you haven't already i, I appreciate it uh number five pick of the week is going to be harley quinn issue number eight which I really should have clarified the, these top five all could be, I think they, I mean, they're all, they're like a one. I always, I feel like I always say this. It could be a one, a one B one C one D. You know, it just goes on and on. These were all great issues. Uh, and I had a hard time or I shouldn't say issues series that I'm looking forward to. Um, I had a hard time, like really, you know, numbering these. I think Harley Quinn three weeks ago was my number one. So to give you guys idea, like, I mean, I'm a big fan of the Harley Quinn series, uh, and a big factor of that goes to Stephanie Phillips, the the writer. Uh, she's got to be, she's probably one of my favorite writers right now, and uh, just really enjoying what she's doing, especially here with, with Harley, as I've become a very big fan of Harley Quinn. The other thing I'm really excited for is the fact that Riley Rosmo is back on the title. He took a few issues off, and I was a little sad about that, but we have Rosmo back now, which I never thought I'd be saying that, because honestly, at first, I wasn't crazy about Rosmo's work it just was something that I needed to, I don't know, just read more on, you know, uh, 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 dive into with this series. It, I, it definitely grew on me. And I know it's, it's, it's not for everybody. It's a certain taste, I think. Um, but once you start to really, I guess, embrace this series, um, for me anyways, I've, I've fallen in love with the guy's artwork. And especially for a character like Harley Quinn, I think it's just perfect for this series. I feel like I say this every time, but I like to clarify that, especially, you know, anyone new here watching, um, you know, it's, and, and the, like I said, the whole thing's been great. So I do recommend this. Uh, it's been a lot of fun right now. Uh, it is still tied into the fear state stuff that Tynan has been doing. So if you, depending on if you're deciding to dive into that fear state series, that event, or if you're, or if you're passing on it, um, then you might want to consider that. So just know that this is kind of still tying into the fear state stuff. Uh, me personally, I've been excited for the fear state stuff. So I will, I mean, that's even more of a reason for me to want to read this, uh, other than the fact that it's, it's Harley Quinn. So, um, let's see, uh, that is going to be my number five pick of the week, Harley Quinn issue number eight. Um, yeah, let's see. Number four, I'm going to go with, yeah, this feels like it's so backed up but it really like it could be number one i'm gonna go with primordial issue number two as my number four pick this is jeff lemire who i just love i think he's he's, he's my favorite writer he's got to be my favorite writer i love what he does uh, this is a five issue miniseries this is issue two of that five series uh the other big thing with this particular series is the fact that he is now teaming up with andrea sorrentino again which if you guys have ever read gideon falls uh, that's that's Sorrentino right there uh, and Jeff Lemire. So uh, really, really excited to see that these two have been teaming up again. And I loved, loved the first issue. Um, it is about it. I, I think it takes place in the future. It's about this doctor who gets hired to uh, uh, essentially uh, come aboard on exploring what happened to. Well, <laughs> let me think out how to explain this. Um, the U.S. sent up 
two animals or two monkeys uh, for this certain project that they had. And at the same time, Russia had sent up a dog, which we could see on the cover here. Um, and then out of nowhere, like those projects just kind of went away. No one ever talked about them. And that was it. Uh, then this guy comes in and they initially hired him to, I guess, continue to clean up uh, uh, the mess that was initially created, but he thought that he was getting in on this project to see how much further they could go with it. Uh, and then he starts to discover that there's like some shady things that had happened. Uh, and like I said, cause they just discontinued this project without telling the world why or what happened to those animals. And he thinks that something's up and, and that's kind of all I'm going to leave it. At. I don't want to get into details. Uh, I do recommend it though. Uh, and again, it's a five issues. I, I'm always nervous with these five issue series because they're hard to make perfect, right? Or they're hard to like, you know, really knock it out of the park. So, but I fully trust Jeff Lemire and Sorrentino. Love them as their as the creators. So, um, looking forward to it. Really like this cover too. So, um, yeah, definitely into that. And that's gonna be my number four pick of the week, Primordial issue number two. Uh, moving along along here, we're gonna go to my number three pick, which is Robin issue number seven. This has just been a fantastic series. We are now into the fight. If you guys have not been reading, essentially Robin has uh, gone to this island to enter in this tournament, uh, along with a bunch of other like assassins and a lot of cool characters that I'm not very familiar with and I'm starting to learn now. Um, but uh, it's just cool to see this this story arc of, of, of Damian Wayne, someone who I'm, again, still like getting to know in general. Um, I love his attitude, his confidence that he has. Uh, the character itself, himself, I, I it makes me want to go back and read more Damian Wayne. Um, but yeah, so he enters what is the Lazarus tournament uh, where they fight to the death. And if you don't know about this island, you you, from what I understand, you you can come back if you die. So that's kind of the gist of like them fighting to the death. Um, but it's been the first like six issues was all like this build up to it. And also seeing like Robin going through uh, kind of where he is right now in life and uh, some of the connections that he has. I know last issue was really powerful. It tied in some of the other Robins. And uh, uh, I, I thought it was a great read. I really enjoyed it. So if you guys are not reading Robin, I do recommend it. Even if you're not a Robin person, I've never read anything Damian Wayne before this. Uh, I don't know. I, don't, I mean, I know very little. I, have, I know very little about all the characters, but it's something that I think you could just jump into and immediately um, really fall in love with in terms of the characters, the writing, the, the action that gets built into this um, and the hype to this big tournament that we're in now that I always say it reminds me of like the Cell games from um, uh, Dragon Ball Z. So uh, that's going to be my number three pick of the week. Robin issue number seven. Um, and uh, yeah, let's see. We're going to go into top two here top two uh man ah, yeah i mean i'm so hyped for this it really should be number one but i have reasons why the other one's number one all right so my number two pick is moths issue number five um this series literally just it gets better and better and better and i'd love the overall concept of this series it's an awa upshot book uh it is written by michael uh, straczynski Mike Choi doing the uh, the artwork here, which has been fantastic as well. Also did the cover here that we're looking at. Um, I know it ties into The Resistance, which I haven't been reading. The AWA Upshot stuff. I like that they're creating this world for The Resistance. I should get into that eventually. I uh, just haven't had time. But um, this series has been fantastic just as a standalone. Um, anybody can read this. Jump right in. Um, if you don't know the idea of it, the general gist is the fact that uh there's a disease in the world it's killed a lot of different people um and there are certain people that are born with abilities um like superpowers essentially but the trick is or the catch i should say is that in order to access your superpowers and again it's not everybody it's, it's select people in the world if they want to if they want to use their superpower um it's like they're born and they like know that they have it they just don't know what it is uh the minute they you can you can choose to activate it within yourself right and if you do uh, the good news is you have these powers. You find out whatever it is. Some people have flying, some people have speed, some people have a lot of other unique uh, uh, powers that I won't get into detail with. But um, the catch is you only have six months to live. So, um, you know, it kind of puts you into the mindset of like, what would you do if you only, if you knew you had powers, you know, would you activate them just so you could use, see what they were and use them uh, knowing that you'd only have six months to live, you know, or would you just not do that? Um you know, and so, and if you did, what would you use it for? Would you use it 
for success? Would you use it to help your family? Would you use it for money? Uh, you know, all these different things, which again, you'd struggle because it's like, you, you only have six months. So it's like, you have money. What do you, what's good with the money? Uh, you know, if you only have six months. So really cool concept. Love what Straczynski is doing here. And uh, this is issue uh, five of six. I think if this was issue six, it'd probably be my number one. N next month, it'll be my number one whenever that comes out. But this is uh, issue number five. So if you haven't read this, go back to one. Uh, well worth it, or unless you're waiting for the trade at this point. Either way, um, that's going to be my number two pick of the week, Moths issue number five. Uh, all right, as we wrap this up here with my number one pick, before we do, again, um, please take a moment, smash the like button, subscribe to the channel if you are new. We are so close to the 1,000 mark, uh, subscriber mark. Really excited for that. Thank you all for the support. We are going to be doing some sort of big, fun stream, live stream party when that does happen. So, you know, uh, continuing the road to 1K, really excited for that. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention is if you didn't already know, John and I, I know I mentioned it briefly, but John and I, uh, we're back with our Omni X-Men. So if you guys are looking to uh, talk X-Men with us, whether you are familiar with uh, what we're reading or not, uh, it's a, it's a good time. And the way we break things down, we, sh we go panel by panel for the most part. And we, sh we break down each issue from the Claremont run. Uh, so we are in the middle of the Dark Phoenix saga. So if you guys have not, um, or if you guys have always wanted to read that and you haven't, it's a good time to kind of jump in. And like I said, if you've read it or not, we break it down. Uh, we have a good time doing it. Uh, a lot of laughs with the chat. Uh, we love the community that we've built around this uh, these, this Omni X Men, this omnibus that we that have brought us all together. Uh, but they're on every Tuesday, nine o'clock Eastern time. Um, the next episode is going to be over on John's channel. We do giveaways, raffles, all that stuff. We do trivia uh, based on you know last week's episode, things like that. So we go back and forth on each other's channel. So again, that's going to be coming up again um, this Tuesday, coming up uh, nine o'clock uh, Eastern. I'll make sure to put his uh, information in the description below. Uh, and again, shout out to everybody in the premiere chat right now. Appreciate all of you hanging out here on a Thursday afternoon or morning or evening, whatever, wherever you are right now, um, either way. And if you're just watching the replay, of course, I appreciate that as well. And again, just smash that thumbs up for me uh, when you get a chance. And let's jump into my last pick here. And I mean, this is like kind of a surprise, right? I think this is a surprise because I, up until last week, last week was the first time I really had an X-Men book on my top 10. And now I already, now that I'm all caught up, I don't know if you guys know this, I'm all caught up with Jonathan Hickman's, um, you know, main story arc that he's been developing for for the past two years. Uh, and so I got to go with Inferno issue number one, uh, excuse me, is issue number two as my number one pick of the week. Uh, you got Emma Frost chilling there with a couple of helmets. Interesting, interesting stuff there. Um, I won't get into the details, especially I know there's not, uh, I know not, not everybody may be caught up with this, but I will say, um, since I was in Vegas and, you know, had, had some time to really dive into something to read, um, I took time to really just hammer through everything and catch up all the way to where we are now. So um, I yesterday or earlier today, uh, recording this on a Wednesday, just finished um, Trial of Magneto, issue number three, which is fantastic. And uh, and I'm, it just feels so good to be caught up with X Men. It really does. So um, this is Inferno, uh, issue number two. This is the the culmination of you know the grand finale of what Hickman essentially was planning, even though it's getting cut short, from my understanding. So, um, but either way, I'm all for it. I'm really excited to be uh, experiencing this live in the sense of you know reading as it's coming out um so yeah it's been fantastic if you guys are thinking about it definitely go back you know look up the list or reach out to me i can give you the list of kind of what issues you should read if, if you want to kind of skip certain things and jump jump ahead to really make sure you catch up but understand what's going on um obviously you want to read house of x powers of x if you have not already uh that's you know the core of anything if you're diving into the hickman stuff um but anyways that's going to be my number one pick of the week inferno issue number two um epic it's going to be epic hopefully. Uh, so there you go. Uh, that's my list. That is my list. Uh, again, just want to thank everybody for hanging out with me today. Uh, a reminder, these are all books coming out next week for new comic book day, October 27th, 2021. So, uh, until then, hope you guys got uh, all the books that you wanted for this new comic book day and, uh, make sure you leave a comment in the comment section below that, el that helps the channel. Uh, let me know what you guys think. If you guys stuck it out this long, uh, leave a comment in the comment section and, uh, uh, leave me a, a monkey emoji. 
uh, and, and we'll see where we do with these these little collections that I've been uh, asking people to leave some comments. So if you're still here, if you're still watching, go in the comment section below, not the live chat, but the comment section below uh, and leave a little monkey emoji and let me know what you're reading. You know, you know I want to know what you got or, or what you could recommend if, uh, if I don't have something on here. Because uh, there's a lot of great books every week. Great, great week for comics. So uh, until next time, I'll talk to you guys later. Thank you.